वेलकम बैक एवरीवन माय नेम इज सागर एंड टुडे वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद कलेक्शन फ्रेमवर्क इन जावा एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट एरे लिस्ट एंड वी विल आल्सो लर्न अबाउट जेनेरिक्स इन जावा सो लेट मी जस्ट टेल यू व्हाट इज अ एरे लिस्ट सो एरे लिस्ट सो इट इज जस्ट लाइक अ एरे बट इट इज अ डायनामिक एरे सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी जस्ट टेल यू इट इज अ एरे लिस्ट क्लास व्हिच इज इंटरनली यूजिंग एन एरे सो सेम एज एन एरे इट आल्सो स्टोर ऑब्जेक्ट इन अ लीनियर फैशन एंड लेट मी जस्ट टेल यू इट इज इंप्लीमेंटिंग लिस्ट इंटरफेस as you can see the parent class of this array list is this abstract class and it is implementing this list interface so list is a interface and this interface is extending our collection interface so collection is a whole framework in java and you can see there is one interface that can also extend another interface so i just forgot that thing in our interface video that one interface can also extend another interface but if there is a class then it will implement a interface like this okay and here you can see this new thing what is this angular braces and what is this e so this is generics in java and we will also learn about that so first of all what is array list you will see that uh, we are using here these arrays so this is a array and uh, this is also array this is array so we are using internally an array inside of our array list and uh, let me tell you one cool thing about array list that when we are creating an array list so this is a class so that means we can create an object of that class so array list using our new keyword so we already know that we can create object using this new keyword so we are creating this array list object and it is here array list so the cool thing about array list is so it is internally working as an array but we can store anything inside of it so suppose i am creating an array list then i can store here a string value so suppose sagar and in the same array list object i can store here so using this add method i can store here object inside of my array list so i can also store one and uh, suppose i am also storing here a boolean value that is a true so now you can see this thing inside of one array list i can store a string value a integer value and also a boolean value and if i am creating a integer array so if i am creating an array then i can only store integer value because i am here creating a integer array and you can see i also have to define here the size but for our array list we don't have to define here the size and that is the difference the array list is a dynamic array and if you are following our java plus dsa course then you already know about this dynamic array thing that we already learned in our string builder video so if you don't know about dynamic array then first go watch out that video and let me quickly tell you how this is a dynamic array so that means when i am initializing an array list so internally i am creating an array of 1 2 3 4 5 6 so i am internally creating an array of size 6 and that means currently i can only store six objects so first of all i am storing this three let me just do it again so after that i am storing three more objects and suppose i am storing here one true as one true so suppose now i want to store more objects then i can still do it so suppose i am doing this thing so what is happening here the array size is here six but i am storing here seven elements so how is this possible this is because of dynamic array and here what is happening so here what is happening internally so when i am doing this thing so when the size of my current array is full so i will just create another array of approx double size and what i will do i will just copy all these elements inside of this second array t s 1 true and after that if i want to add more elements then i can just do it here so i can just add as many elements as i want and after that the garbage collector in java will just remove this thing here okay so my new array is this now my new array list and internally it will just use a array so this is how array list dynamic array works and if you want a more detailed explanation then you can watch our string builder video but it is how it works i don't think you need more explanation of it so this is a dynamic array and let me just tell you how it is storing here different data types so first of all this is string and then this is integer then boolean but inside of our array we can only store one object one type of object so inside of our array list as you can see here this is a type of object class and you know object is a parent of all classes so that means when i am passing here a string so string is also a class so if there is any class then that class will be a children of object class automatically so if you are also creating here a class so class my class and uh, this will also have some property and they will and this will be also children of object class so like this my class dot and uh, let me just uh, create here object so new object and uh, now you can see get class equals hash code to string these are all the methods of object class okay
so if string is a class then that means it is a kind of object so we can add here an object right and uh, what is this integer so this is an int value int but int is a primitive data type and let me tell you primitive data types are not children of object class so what is happening here how are, how we are able to add an integer primitive data type here no we are not adding here primitive data type but we are adding here integer class so there is also integer class that is present in java so let me just show you integer a equal to 1 so we can also do like this or we can write here int x equal to 1 so this is the same thing but this is a class and this is here a primitive data type and if we are adding here 1 so by default it is treating it as this integer class and and uh, let me just show you so this integer class is a, is just a wrapper class and it is internally using our int value that is primitive data type so there are these wrapper classes that are present for all our primitive data types so for this boolean value we have this boolean class so this is a boolean class and we can say y equal to true and also for another data types for float we have also for our double value and uh, and and for all other data types suppose byte so these are all the wrapper classes but if you want primitive data types then we can also write it as this so this is a primitive data type and this is a wrapper class and for this array list we will be using these wrapper classes okay so i hope now you understand the concept of this thing how we are adding here different types but uh, it is not recommended in java and that is because you are you are getting these warnings and uh, this is saying row use of parameterized class array list and that is because it takes here a specific type and we have to define that in these angular braces so suppose this is an array list type of integer and I have to define here this integer wrapper class of int. And now you can see I cannot add here strings or these boolean values. So let me just remove this thing. And why am I getting this warning? Because I have to use here this. So you can see unchecked assignment. So I have to write here this thing. And now you can see. So using this angular basis now i can define the specific type of this array list and also i can define here list because list is the parent of this array list class and list is the interface so i can just define it like this so if you want to understand this thing clearly then go watch out our interface video so this list is the interface but we cannot initialize interfaces right so we have to initialize with some class and we are creating here array list object and if we don't want to create an array list then we can also create here a link list object and this will be also not a problem and now you can see we are defining here a list but it can be either our array list or it can be our link list so we will learn about link list in our next video so this is our array list and uh, it is sometimes slower than your array because of this thing because uh, when we are creating our array and the size is full we have to copy all the elements inside of a new array so this can be a very bad thing so suppose if you want to define here the current size so suppose you have to define the initial size so you can define it here so it is the initial capacity and that means we are going to create an array of size 100 and after that after the 100 size is full then we are going to create another array of suppose 200 size automatically so you don't have to do this thing and this is the array list class and that means this class will have also a lot of methods so array list dot let me just uh, tell you about all these methods so first of all add add means first of all we can define here using this add method we can just add our elements inside of our array list so you can see it takes also an argument that is your integer object okay and it also returns a boolean value so here you can see this is our parameter and this is our return type so suppose i am getting here this and i am returning here some value like this okay so if this value is inserted successfully then it will return true or false and after that let me just show you more methods so after that this is one more add method and you can see now there are two parameters first of all index and after that the element so this index value is an integer now you can see int index and this is an integer wrapper class object that we are going to add and using this method we can insert element at a specific index and after that we have this two array method and it will just return us an array of that particular object that is integer object so let me just do this thing so it will just return us an integer array arr suppose this and now you can see there is no error there should be no error okay now you can see require type is int and we are defining here object so that means we can we can use here type class because this thing is returning us an object array and we want integer object array so we want to specify the type 
so we can just use here this thing we can define that this is a particular integer array type okay so let me show you another method so after that we have uh, this uh, add all method and uh, that means you can just add another collection it takes a collection object so collection can be anything so a collection can be our link list it can be our stack it can be our queue so we can just add a collection of another data type to our array list okay so this is a method from our collection so you can just create here a stack data structure and after that you can just add that whole stack inside of this array list using this add all method so after that we have this clear method so clear means we will just create clear our whole array list and after that this contains so we can just tell whether object is present present inside of our array list or not and that thing was not possible in our array so we have to manually iterate over the array to find that object and we can just do this thing by using this contains method and it will just do the same thing internally but we have this method so after that we have this contains all and it also takes a, a collection object as a parameter so after that we have this equals and get method so we can just get any element at particular index so suppose i want so this also follows zero base indexing and remember that thing in our programming everything follows zero base indexing so this is one on our zero index so i want to get the object of one index so let me just check this will just return me one okay and now and now you can see one and this thing is internally happening like this so array is zero so when we were creating our array we were using this thing and it is doing the same thing here okay so let me just remove this thing and let me just check another methods so after that we have this uh, is empty method and that will return us a true or false whether our error list is empty or not and we also have the size that will tell us the size of all our our whole array list the total elements that are present and index of so we can just specify an element so suppose two so what is the index of two and that thing was not possible with our normal array and we had to linearly iterate over the array to get the index of particular element but we are defining here two so we will just get what is the index of the two so it will just return me one because you can see on zero index we have one and on our one index we have two so it will just return me one as you can see so the index <coughs> so the index of two inside of our array list is one and uh, let me just check more methods so there are a lot of methods that you can check what is the last index of this element so if there are multiple elements inside of our array list then we can use this method to get the last index and there is also remove method that means we can just remove any object from our array list or we can also remove any object at a particular index so remove all and after that there is a set that means we can just change our object at particular index okay there is also sub list that means we can just crop our array list and we can just get a new list so you can see it returns us a list object list of integer as you can see here so after that uh, you can just check all the methods that are present okay so let me now just tell you about this generics so this is all about our array list but what is this generic type what we are defining here inside of these angular braces so suppose i am creating here a class that is a pair class so i have to define a pair of name and phone number so suppose uh, not phone number but uh, but suppose but suppose any kind of pair so now i am defining here string that is name and int that is number and suppose i also have uh, this constructor string name and int number this dot name equal to name so i hope you already know about this keyword from our oops and this dot number equal to number so i am creating here a constructor and suppose this is us this should be i think uh, this should be a static class so if you don't know about static keyword then you can watch out our uh, playlist and uh, now i have to create here a pair object pair and uh, so here inside of this i have to define a pair of string and integer type so first of all a string and integer type suppose one two three and after that i can also print here pair dot two string so i can also use this method but it will not return us anything and that is because this two string method is not overridden for this pair class and this is from my object class so i can just override this okay 
so i can just override this method and you can just learn about all these oops concept from our complete oops playlist so i can just override here void i think it is a void function to string and uh, i think this should not give us an error so it is a two string so it will just return me a string value so i have to return here uh, suppose suppose name dot two string plus this space and after that number dot two string so this number is a primitive data type and this dot have a two string method so i will just create it as a teaser data type and why it is showing here the error okay let me make it public and that's it so this method is now from our object class okay and we are just overriding it here so let me just run it and now it should print us sagar and one two three okay you can see this thing but this is a very normal program and there is nothing complex here i am just passing a string and integer and i am printing that but now let me just introduce you the concept of generics so this is a specific thing that i have to define here only the string type and the second parameter will be only an integer type but what if i want to create a pair of integer one two three and a boolean so then this thing is not possible so suppose i am not creating here name and number i am just creating here first so first and second and uh, let me just make it first and second here so like this so i am defining here two parameters that are first and second so first here and second here but uh, here you can see i can only pass first parameter as a string and second as an integer and i cannot do this thing integer and a boolean type so if i want to define a general thing then i can just use here generics type that means i can just define here unknown type that i will define at the time of creating the objects so here using this angular braces i can just define here that that i will be using two types inside of this class and i will be defining that two types while creating my objects so i will be using two types that will be k and v so k and p so this k and v generally represent key and value and you have to just and if you are defining a generic type then this is a common practice that we can use here one uppercase character so this k and v or you can just say first and second so this first is a type of f and uh, this second is a type of s and now you can see type parameter of this thing so here now this f will act as our children of object class and i have to define this f and s at the time of creating my object and uh, i can now just define here this is f this is s and uh, this is first this is second and that's it now i can just define here the type so now you can see here i am passing first as integer and second as a boolean value so i can just define this thing first one is integer and second one is a boolean and uh, here just i have to do this thing or it will just uh, give me some warning so now you can see so previously we used to also pass here this type integer and boolean but later java noticed this thing that this is unnecessary we can just define here one time our types and uh, we just have to don't do this so here this is our pair class and inside of this now i am defining it will take integer and boolean type and now this will just do the same thing so let me just print it will just print me one two three three and two and uh, now you can see this is the use of our generics type and if you are also doing some calculation then you can define your own type so i am checking here if so here i can define some logic if this first parameter is a type of integer so what you can do is you can just define here instance of so this is a keyword using which we can uh, we can check whether a parameter whether anything is a type of some particular object so if this first is an integer then what we can do is we can just print yes we got integer and uh, that that's it this statement will either return us a true or false and uh, let me just check now so this thing will now return as true and we are going to print this thing because we are passing here first parameter as an integer and now you can see yes we got integer and after that we are printing it 
and uh, let me now just pass here something else so i can also pass here string and boolean and here i have to pass this thing so this time we will not get this statement because this is not an integer type right and now you can see we are just printing this thing so i hope now you understand this thing and what is the use of this generic type and uh, this is mainly used in our collection framework and when we are creating our map object so we will be also learning about map and here we have to define our two parameters that are here integer and integer so using map we can just create a collection of key value pairs okay so we will learn about that also so you can also pass here multiple parameters so a first second you can also define her third you can also define her fourth so fourth will be suppose d so you can define her multiple parameters and you have to and you have and you have to specify them at the time of object creation so you can define here either it is a boolean it is a string or it can be your custom class so suppose this is a pair so a pair can be also a part of pair class okay and you can just define here string okay let me just make here two objects only suppose i am doing this thing thing and string so now you can see this thing uh, this so here you can see i am passing pair and the first parameter is a string and the second parameter is a pair class object itself and and this pair class object contains two string values okay so you can also do this thing and this thing is very cool we can just define a pair of anything literally anything and that thing is only possible because of generics in java so you can just start your journey with collection framework now and you can use this array list instead of using an array if you don't know the specific size of your list so that is it about today everyone and if you learned something new today then do subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching.